In March 1991, Eric Clapton's four-year-old son fell from the 53rd floor of an apartment building and died. And in his distraught state, Clapton, <coughs> a well-known guitarist and songwriter, poured out his anguish in a ballad known as Tears in Heaven. Listen for a moment to the opening and hear this parent's anguish. Would you know my name? Will it be the same if I saw you in heaven? He's expressing that deep, deep desire that we all feel when death tears apart our bonds of relationship and leaves us with only memories and tears and loneliness. He wants to know, will, it, will we be together in heaven? Will we know each other? Will we recognize each other? Will we still have that connection? Will we still have the love between us that we had before? Clapton doesn't doubt if there is a heaven or if his son is there. That's a given. He sings, beyond the door there's peace, I'm sure, and I know there'll be no more tears in heaven. But while the son is in heaven and the father is on earth, he's left with, I must be strong and carry on because I know I don't belong in heaven. It's not time yet to be reunited with his son. And in the meantime, he's going to draw comfort from the hope, <coughs> even if that hope is expressed as a question, that they will once more be together in heaven. The Thessalonians, as we heard from the first scripture that Jean read for us today, struggled with those same longings, similar questions but their faith was not yet undergirded with that hope. Paul, Silas, and Timothy had gone to Thessalonia, <coughs> and they'd shared the good news of Jesus. And they had told the stories of Jesus Christ, and about how he died, and about how he'd been brought back again. But the Thessalonians <coughs> were left with the impression that Christ's return was imminent that he could come of any minute, of any day, that he might even come right now. And then Christ, when, when Christ did return, all the believers would be gathered up and taken to heaven. But the days and the weeks and the months went by and Christ did not return. And the people that they loved passed away. And so they wrote to Paul and Silas and Timothy and they asked, what about those who'd already died? Would they have eternal life in heaven as well? They wanted to know, will he know my name? Will it be the same? Will we be together in heaven? And so Paul responded. He said, since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, we can count on God through Jesus to bring all believers back into eternal life life. Paul described how those that had already died would be brought first and then the living would also be snatched up to meet the Lord. We believe that Jesus died for us. We believe that God raised him up again. We believe that Christ's resurrection is just the beginning of a new creation. That that resurrection is a cosmic event, event that deflates the power of death, and that one day we will all be together in God's love. So our grief when we lose someone is undergirded with hope. Oh, we cry real tears. In fact, we allow all our emotions to be there. That's not part of not grieving, but when we do grieve, we grieve undergirded with hope. We view death as a triumphant passage into a fuller, more glorious life. Death is the door to eternity. During the past week, 
Steve Jobs' last words have been in the news, and there's been a lot of interpretation of what they could possibly mean. Mona Simpson, Steve's sister, describes his last moments. She said that he looked at his sister Patty, that he looked into the eyes of his children for quite a long time, that he looked at his life partner Lorene, and then he looked past their shoulders and he uttered his last words, oh wow, oh wow, oh wow. We can't be sure what Steve Jobs saw or why he uttered those words. But oh wow would be a fitting response for what has been. A response to all the blessings of life. And oh wow would be a fitting response for what is. For the love of the family gathered around him. For the love of his friends who had said goodbye over the last few days or for the love of God. And oh wow is a fitting response of what is yet to be in an eternal life with God. These are hope-filled words, and I'd like to be able to pass through the door into eternity and be able to say, oh wow. Mona Simpson also said that we all die in the middle of our story that we all die in the middle of everybody else's story. And she's right. We play out the first part of our story here on earth, in Christ's love. And then we play out the second part of our story in Christ's love in heaven. Oliver Cromwell, the Lord and Protector of England in the 16th century, said as he lay dying, Is there no one here that will praise the Lord? He faced the next chapter of his life with joy and, and with certainty. In one of the books he wrote, the last chapter was entitled Death, and it only had three words, to be continued. Steve Jobs wrestled with the concepts about God and afterlife. Sometimes he felt that the different religions were like different doorways into the same house, possibly God's house. And other times he felt that life had a switch. Click, and you're gone. What we believe shapes our lives. Some people are depressed with the thought that this is all there is. Time is short, and when it's done, there's nothing else. Others decide that each moment can be filled with meaning and purpose. We, we shape our lives on God's love. The life and death and resurrection of Jesus shows us as an example of how we are to live and gives us hope that nothing, nothing can separate us from God's love. We proclaim that mystery every time we take communion. We say Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. And that's why we baptize our children like Nathan into our faith. We want them growing up, knowing the stories of God's love. Every child is born with a desire to love and to be loved. The Lord is the solution to the longings of all of our hearts. We find purpose for life in God's love. We are transformed in God's love. And we have the power to change the world through God's love. And in the middle of our stories, we have the hope that after death we will be united again in God's love. An unknown poet said it this way, when God sends forth a spotless soul to, earn, to learn the ways of earth, a mother's love is waiting there. And we call this wonder birth. When God calls home a tired soul and stills a fretful breath, love divine is waiting there. This, too, is birth, not death. 
Eric Clapton stopped performing Tears in Heaven in 2004. He said he'd found his healing in grief. Not that we ever get over losing someone, but his raw, intense feelings of loss that were expressed in the song were gone. And he was too painful for him to revisit those same feelings over and over again. But others continue to find this song to be healing. I've heard it played at memorials. I've heard it used after the tsunami in South Asia by a group of musicians to express their hopeful grief and to garner help with disaster relief. A song like this is like the encouraging words that we find in that letter to Thessalonians. It reminds us of the hope and promise of life eternal with God. And Thessalonians says, For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring to him those who have died. We are reminded that there are no more tears in heaven, and that in the middle of our stories, we too can have an oh wow moment when we join all the saints in heaven. Amen.